Join Radhi and I for a part two of our special On Purpose episode today with BMW. Today, Radhi and I switch roles and I go grocery shopping in Radhi's place. Tune in for the road trip with the all-electric BMW iX. Yeah, it's super nice. It's pretty really spacious. Let's go! So, Radhi, what's the challenge today? Okay, so you remember a couple of years ago, we did this YouTube video where you made something for Yeah, I've been me. trying to block it out ever okay, since. Okay, so you at that time made me, what did you make me? I made you, so this is the one and only time in our entire life that I think one I cooked One time, for you. one time only. And I promised it would be one time only. I cooked you a stuffed pepper okay. and it was the best rice stuffed pepper you'd ever okay. had in your entire life. It was, it actually made it into my cookbook. I don't know whether I've ever even told you this, but there is a recipe Imagine you, out of all people, have a recipe in my That's cooker. amazing. No, I told ridiculous. you, if I wanted to be a chef, I'd, I'd be, you know, I was asked really if, if you've it. ever cooked for me, if there's any recipes that remind me of you. And <laughs> there was one. It was either that or beans on toast. They said I couldn't put beans, beans on toast Beans on toast, there. that would have been the best. With no, cheese sprinkled no, on top. No, I can't. That's not with in my ketchup. cookbook. What yeah. made it into my book, just because stuffed pepper didn't feel fun enough, right. it's a one-pot Mexican rice. Wait, why did the stuffed pepper not feel good enough? It just was like a bit basic, honestly. <laughs> the actual Mexican rice has made it. It's like a one-pot Mexican rice dish. So you already kind of know how to do this. So I don't. I don't have no idea. You're like cheating a little bit. I literally have no idea. What we're going to do is you're gonna, we're going to the grocery store or the supermarket, as we like to call it, and we are, you're going you're gonna to buy all the ingredients. This is my worst nightmare. But on top of that, just to make it a little bit spicy, we are going to get you making some guacamole and some healthy sour cream to be able to dollop on top. And then I will joyfully <laughs> eat it for lunch. While we're on the way to the grocery store, let's answer some questions. All right, let's do it. So you've got them next to you, because I can't I can't read questions and yeah, drive at the same time. I don't think that would be very safe. If we were doing carpool karaoke right now, what would what would it be? Oh, mine would be, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, or it would be, baby, calm down. Calm down. Okay, cool. You know, the, right, yeah, yeah. don't tell me no, no, no. Well, you have no, to know whoa, the words. Whoa, 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 oh, 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 Got it, oh. got it. <laughs> you always make fun of me because he makes fun of me in my music choice because he says a lot of it, there isn't actual words. It's either mumble or it's... Sound. Sounds. Sounds. <laughs> um, so that would be mine. And if it was Jay, it would be... Don't never stop. <laughs> what is it? It'd be a Drake song. Yeah, yeah Drake, Drake song. song. Yeah. Everybody obviously got that I was doing Drake Right, that's that. exactly where they go. <laughs> um, All right, so what are the questions? What's the biggest difference between drivers in LA and drivers in London? Oh, I, I don't have to know. say, I do find LA drivers a little bit more impatient. Just really? Out there. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I do find there's a lot more beeping. No one wants to give you away. Whereas, you know what? In London, I'd say people do let you into things. Really? Yeah. Oh, I interesting. So. I feel like here. one thing I really love about driving in LA as a driver myself is I love the palm trees. <laughs> I like. Oh, I feel like look yeah. at this. I feel like I'm on a constant vacation. This because... is about drivers, though. Right, right, right. Like drive, but I agree. I do find the highways scary in LA. <gasps> Me too, because like, you when have people that are thing switching of going lanes, off. yeah, when people are switching lanes, and obviously everything's the other way around for us. So you're driving on a different side of the yeah. road, and the, the steering wheel's on a different side of the car. Yeah. So especially, I find. When I come back from London, I find it even scarier. Mm -hmm. And I find myself too much on one side or the other. Oh, I do that all the time. But yeah, and I think, I mean, I think drivers pretty much everywhere in the world are pretty impatient, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I am too, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> um, do you believe you are... <laughs> do you believe you're a backseat driver? Okay, I'm a proud backseat driver. You know why? Because my line every time I do a backseat driver thing, like, watch out or don't go that close is, Imagine I didn't say that I could have just saved your life and somebody else's. The difference is every time you say it, I'm like, the way you say it is more likely to cause an accident. <gasps> yeah, exactly. No. Yes. Ex Don't do that. Yeah, exactly. Then save me. Like, I'm like, literally, I have a shock. Like, I literally have a shock <laughs> every time you say it. I'm like, what happened? Like, what happened? Did something, did something happen? And you're like, no, just. I was what's my sure. usual, oh my gosh, it's mummy. Yeah, mummy. It's like, what's mummy gonna do? I would say I am more of a backseat driver than Jay is, yes. I'm not a backseat driver at all. Maybe that just shows I care more. I'm also not a backseat driver in life. Oh, line drop. No, no, but it, it's important. It's, it's an interesting question, right? Like This is like, you know what? Jay Shetty getting Jay Shetty on me. So actually, you know what? Let's go deeper into that. What does it mean to be a backseat driver in your life? Please. It's a good question then. What does it mean, Jay, to be a backseat driver? Please do tell us. No, I life. just I just think that some of us, you know, grab life by the steering wheel mm -hmm. and navigate and take the journey ourselves. And some of us sit in the back seat and criticize and judge and 
complain about whatever else Do you not think that in life we need both backseat drivers and people who want to take the steering wheel and too many steering wheel people would actually be not impact, not good? <laughs> that, was, that was an amazing question. Yeah. That was an amazing question. Uh, no, I, I believe that when you're driving, you should drive safely and securely and responsibly. And when you're in the back seat, you should be obedient. <laughs> I'm talking about that, that. What? In life, in life. Oh, in life. Yeah, in life. Okay, next question, people. <laughs> next question. If you could pick three people to fill your car with. Oh, on a road good trip. question. Oh, just to remind everyone, these were questions that my team came up with, so we had no idea what, what we were going to be. Yeah. If you could pick three people to fill your car with on a road trip, who would they be? Go on, let's try one each. What, three people from... in the whole entire world? Yeah. Okay, I, ex- I know who Yours are easy. Go on. Yeah, mine are quite easy. Go on. Mine would be... Okay, people alive would be my grandma, my niece and my nephew. Yeah. Banter. Yeah, didn't, forever. didn't make it. So much I didn't fun. Make it. Yeah. No, but that would be like... It would be so funny because... <laughs> three in the back. Three in the back. We'll put three in the back. Then three I can in, be the in the back. Car, then I you can be in the car too. Yeah. But okay. not alive. I would love to have a car full of like my grandma and then her grandma and like oh, my wow, ancestors. That's sweet. One, I love driving around old people. I do it for my grandma and her friends all the time, and it is so much fun because they're hilarious. You know, one thing I found: my dad opens up on road trips. Like if it's just me and him, he's driving me to the airport, or he's. My sister told me yesterday that he was driving her to the airport, and he starts telling stories about himself. Like it creates this time and space where people can open up a little bit. And so, with that in mind, I think I would want that with people that I really wish I had got to know, but we didn't have the chance to. What questions would you ask, or what game would you play with these people in the car mm. on a long journey? For fun, I would definitely play well our version, Indian version of carpool karaoke and Takshari, mm-hmm. where you all just sing like old Indian songs. But I imagine my grandma and her ancestors would probably sing like devotional songs mm-hmm. uh, or God songs which is amazing but then to actually ask them questions oh I love word association I think it tells a lot about people right to like to like understand when they hear something what they relate it to right 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 so yeah that's what I've been what cool. about you who would your three people be oh gosh alright so if it was living it would be you my sister mm-hmm. and my mum yeah and that would be like my family trip. Yeah. If it was people who weren't alive or like people I don't know, I'd want it to be Steve Jobs, Martin Luther King, and Einstein. Oh, wow. And I wouldn't say anything. I would just listen. It would be all of them in I would, one yeah, car. Yeah, because I would, have no, I would just listen. I would have nothing to say. Yeah, I would just, I would just, just sit observe. there and think about what they would say. You know who else is so fun in the car that we've done a few a few random car trips with him together is Radhana Swami because I feel like he really brings up such good conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. and also does the same thing my dad does where there's so many stories that come out during those trips. Totally. I love totally. those trips. Yeah. Actually, I'd, I'd take you out and put him into mine, sorry. Got it, got yeah. it. With your <laughs> bar and your my niece My grandma, and nephew. my niece, my nephew. Yeah. I'm not sure that. I'm not sure he'd enjoy that. I was going to say the other person you love having in the car is Ardil. Oh, yeah, that's a good carpool karaoke you, yeah, yeah, you and Ardil are yeah, always singing in that's cars. That's true. That's good. Good answer. I, yeah. That would be a really interesting conversation to have yeah. if it was possible. <laughs> Who is more likely to leave the car lights on overnight? I literally did that yesterday. Not overnight. Did you? Not overnight, no. You leave the car lights on, you leave the car unlocked, you forget to charge the car. I leave my like little like we're so lucky that we have electric cars right right now this electric car I've always got a spare hairband a spare drink a spare um, some pair of sunglasses some snacks there's always something here lingering right that's really a blessing (laughs) Um, (laughs) so then yeah it wouldn't be me I'll take that I find that I go through periods where the car is immaculate and then when I have too many clothes you, and shoes in the car. <laughs> there, are, there are times I will literally come to the car and it's like he's been living out of his car for a long period because, of time. Because I've started to realise, like it happened the other night, right? You like, needed a tux. I needed a suit because I had an event to go to and I've started to realise, so I keep my pickleball stuff in the car. Yeah. I need my, I need a suit in the car. I need a suitcase in the car potentially. Yeah. Like I find like so much of my life is so like last minute. True. I like, jump on a plane, do this, do that that I've started to realise that I need to be more prepared. I feel like you weren't prepared for this road trip because where are my beverages? Oh, no, but we're going to buy some Junie when we get there. Okay, fine. Who... Who's most likely to get car sick in a car that they're not oh, driving? Me, me too, yeah. Me. 
I get caustic so Would much. I'm, I still if never I do this, it's let's better. figure that out though. That kind of like. like <laughs> Let's just go a little bit deep into this, shall we? Let's let's dive into it, Jay. Go on. I'm, I'm trying to figure out this whole car sick situation. Like, yeah, why it's just is the imbalance that? in the ear, babe. There's nothing to figure out. No, but then how do we solve our imbalance? Because we've had this for a while. Yeah, no, it's an imbalance in like your eardrum. Right. So there are different ways. You can use peppermint. All that really helps me. Right. Um, so why didn't you bring peppermint? Chewing on ginger. That's really helpful. Right. And then if you are reading, read upwards. Got it. Go on, then. Upwards. What's the next question? Okay, the next question is... Would you need maps to get from our house to go to a grocery yes. store? Yes. Yes. Completely. I think Google Maps has really ruined my ability to absorb in things around me. And like, yeah. I, I don't know what I would be without Google Maps. I don't, I, well, no, I know what I would be. I don't know where I would be. <laughs> <laughs> if I was, yeah, if I'm in London, I can really get around. But I feel like ever since Same. we moved to the States... I've become very reliant. We're so reliant on maps and... Yes, yeah. yeah, so in conclusion, we both would need maps to get yeah. anywhere. Yeah. I'm assuming... This is a question from you to me. Go on. Do you not answer texts from me because you're playing hard so to So I've told the team that sometimes you don't respond. I have to explain this to our friends as well because our friends will be like, so he's rather upset with me, her. like he's rather okay. Like, I'm fine. I'm like, I'm like, she doesn't reply to her own husband for like seven messages. Like I have to ask you the same question. You're, and quite, realized, you're, quite, you're quite, you're someone who like, it's not, you're not so succinct though. I am succinct. Okay, fine. It's me. it is me, honestly. But I also think, you know what I really do think, and this is, this is I'm going to have a Jay Shetty moment now. I believe that we have this terrible habit of wanting people to reply within like a day or Fair. two. And I'm like, what if I want to reply within a week? But Why? what if we live together? Yeah. And what if I need then to make you can a ask me when you see me. Right. And I just think that there's this, I don't, I, I find that the reason I get distracted so fast is because this need of, oh my gosh, I have to reply to this person fast. I have to reply to this email within this amount of time. I have to, and sometimes I just want the freedom. Like today I replied back to an email three days later. Was anybody hurt by it? No. Well, if they were, I'm sorry, but, or like text messages, someone messaged me and I remembered it this morning. So I was like, oh, four days later. And I don't even feel like I should have to apologize for a late reply because late is relative. Got it. But yes, I, I am bad at it. I'm actually, no, no, you've got really good at it. I've you've gotten got really so good much better. I just find sometimes I need to make a decision. Totally, call me. Yeah. I am not a messenger. I am so yeah, good yeah, with calls. Yeah. And I'm the opposite. I'm a message me. You're don't, a messenger. Yeah, don't always call me because I've been meeting. I'm in the a like, if yeah. you call me, I will pick up and we can talk. I'm more than happy to do that. But because I have to type so much for work and I'm on my phone all the time for that, communication via phone becomes so tedious yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not fun. So call me, beat me if you yeah. want to reach me. One of the times I do take calls, which I do love, is when I'm driving. Like, yeah, that's usually love, my time to take I, a phone same, call. Same. It speeds up any journey. Except you LA can... has such bad reception. Fair. What would each other's first line be if we met now at a party? Oh, interesting. M mine would be something like, did you try the vegan tacos? <laughs> Are you vegan? Are you vegan? Uh, what would mine be? Mine would be... We never I, met at a party, so I don't also have that context. I think maybe but... you'd, say, you'd probably get into like a group convo with, with people and then you'd say something intellectual and then I'd, have a, I'd, I'd ask you something. And... Oh, so I'd use my intellect. Yeah, to, I think you'd use your you. intellect. What's the first song? No, but do you know what? Let's, not, not, let's, let's get into this. No, no, no. I really feel for... Everyone who's like dating right now oh, online it's so and stuff, hard. it's really hard. It's so like, hard. I'm like, you have to be real. interesting on your profile, you have to be interesting on your pictures, then you have to be interesting on text, then you have to be interesting on a voice note, then you have to be interested in real and life. And then you get the real life. It's because you're forced to have to be interesting at every tiny point of connection. No, sometimes I just want to not talk and just be silent. You can't do that on dates. You can't just be yourself. You always feel like you have to, you have to show up as a really excitable, interesting person with a lot that you do in life. Uh, what's your screen time? Oh my gosh. Well, tell me yours, I'll tell you mine later. <gasps> I don't even want to tell you. Tell me. Seven hours, 30 minutes. That makes sense, it's during the work day. Let's see what it, should we see what it is though? Most used WhatsApp, so like yesterday, mm -hmm. was WhatsApp for three hours, so that's mm -hmm. messaging and calls. Talking to your mom. Yeah. Instagram for one hour ten, not bad. Internet surfing for one hour. Notes section forty two minutes because oh, I good. write yeah, on write that. Your, yeah, write your quotes. I write my quotes on there. Write my little reminders, yeah. reflections. Google Maps thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. Messages twenty six minutes. And Google Calendar twenty three minutes. Yeah, that's not too bad. Honestly, that's probably one of my and 
Google Mail 20 minutes. That was writing back to that one email. <laughs> Great. If our relationship had a theme song, what would it be? Pop star. Yeah. I'm a pop star, no, no, da, da. Yeah, I'd go with I, that. I don't think that goes for our relationship. I think that's great. Uh, do you have an ick about me? Ah, uh, I think Where you, to start? Yeah, no, literally. I think it used to be when you used to run late. I can tell you mine. What? Mine is because you know you have this, like, photographic memory. I think you remember everything sometimes. Even if I know I'm in the right, I question myself. But you're because not in the right. I am, though. There are some times where you actually get it wrong. I don't. You do, Damn. and this this is my ick. This part. You're the stubborn one. I don't get anything no, wrong. No, I do get stuff wrong. I'm actually the first to say I'm sorry yeah, or first yeah. to say I've got something wrong. You you're are. the stubborn one. I am stubborn. So it's your stubbornness. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to start a fight. All right, so we're here. Yay. Made it. Made it. Enjoyed that conversation with you. Me too. It was really great. <laughs> I'm really excited to get a little beverage. There you go. And for the challenge, I am not very excited. Are you ready? Uh, Are you ready? No. Come on, let's go. Let's go get some food. Yeah. Come make me some dinner. It's Friday. I need some. I right, need to break, it. okay? Let's do it. How do I open this? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh, you're not opening my door for me now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> See you, Shall we visit here? Yeah. Let's go. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna give you the recipe. All right. It's written here. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it to you. You have to find the ingredients, and that's that, mate. Here you go. I, I'm happy to help you here and there. Okay. <laughs> I need. I need. I'm getting you to push I'll do this. this. Yeah. You do that. Okay, go. All right. One cup of short grain brown rice. Now, what section do you think that might be? In? Well, in the rice section. Correct. But there is. No, but there is, Where right now, I? I don't see any signs. Wait, right now, we're in the beverage section. No, oh, obviously. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's grab, here we go. Let's grab some Juni. Which one, I'll which flavor do you want? Raspberry, you do lemon. That deserves a little seat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Take you. some for the team. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You want one as well, Homer? Which flavor? Raspberry oh. tropical too? All right. Yeah, we've got two yeah, tropicals. Got two tropicals. Perfect. Perfect. All right, good. Okay. What else do you need? Avocados. Okay, but. How do you know, how are you going to pick this avocado? Wait, I think the darker they are, the better. Darker they are, but yes, definitely if you want to eat them today. So feel it, like, do you think that one's right? It's soft. Does it feel right? Yeah, because it's soft. Yeah, you're bruising it right now. Okay. But yes, <laughs> around the, so, so that I'm one right. feels like too soft. Find another. This one. Well, that's a really good one. Okay, right. Well done. Let's take four for good, just all in right. case. Okay. Um, all right, bell pepper is going to be here. It doesn't say a colour. Oh, pick a colour that you'd like. I like red. Pick a good one. Yeah, I'm trying to. That's, thank you, man. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> thank you. This that's is why I never bring him That's exactly honestly. what she wanted. There we go. Well done. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Cool. All right, now, these ones. Here we uh -huh, go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So... You could grab, like, two. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. All right. You're doing really, really good. About half a small head of cabbage. No, There's our thing. You've left our... Our trolley, yeah. Yeah, you, you left, left our trolley. You left to park no, up No, you left trolley. our trolley. What if we... What if someone else takes it? All right, now I need one bay leaf. There we go. Nice! All right. So proud. Look what I found. Kiwi berries. All right, so now we're looking for canned diced tomatoes. I think they'll be in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe use the You're C so sweet for helping me out. Use this. I've been looking down here the whole time. She's like, just look up on that. Oh, okay. Use the CSA one. Where to the left. Th to the left. To the one. left. Mild or spicy? Spicy. Spicy. Just one? Yeah. Organic black beans? Yeah. Give me the good stuff. Yeah. All right. You might find the sweet corn somewhere. One cup short grain brown rice. Long grain. Short grain brown. There we go. Hey. All right, short grain brown rice, yeah? Look at all the different types of rices there are oh, in the no. world. It's too many. It's amazing. Too many. All right. This is a mistake I used to make back in London all the time. My mum would send me out to get coriander, and I'd end up coming back with parsley. You can never tell the difference. How do you tell the difference? You, you missed out something in the, that area. Huh? Oh, lime. No, it says, well, half tablespoon fresh lime juice. Yeah, lime. So you, you get it from a lime. No, you buy lime juice. <laughs> Stop it, you're making me scared about my recipes. 
You know this one? Do you know what that reminded me of? Huh? It reminded me of that scene in The Breakup where Jennifer Aniston asked Vince Vaughn to get lemons for the table. And he's like, why do we need lemons for the table? Oh, yeah. And they have a full-blown argument about why lemons are a good table decoration or not. All right, I'm going to get the unsweetened yogurt. Please, get a small one. Well, lucky for you, I have some at home. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you for your help. Thanks so much. I have some at home. You see how I was misled? She has some at home. It's on the list, but it's not at this store. Look at the canned diced tomatoes. This is honestly my dream. Like, my dream few hours spare to spend is in a grocery store. It's probably his night. You can't ask questions. I had to. I had to. Look how, look how they've... One cup canned diced tomatoes. So this is it. Great. I had to ask for help for some things. I mean, who's going to look down there? Be honest. Are you going to see that? Tomato paste. Uh -huh. I need to find that. I have no idea what tomato paste looks like. It might be in this similar area, babe. Yeah. No, you're, you're facing the right way. Here we go. Double concentrated tomato yeah, paste? That's perfect. All I'll right. OK, the only one I have left is sweet corn kernels. I'm going to look for them myself. OK, go on. There's my friendly helper. <laughs> oh, I mean, this way, this way. Do you do sweet corn in a can, like sweet corn kernels? That's it. All right. Wait, let me check. Brown rice, check. Canned diced tomatoes, check. Two tables sunflower oil or avocado oil. You have I've got that at you, home. I've got you for that. Bell pepper, got it. Cabbage, got it. Bay leaf, got it. Canned black beans, jalapeno peppers, sweet corn kernels, taco seasoning, tomato paste, sugar salt, asafoetida, fresh lime juice, chopped fresh cilantro, five avocados, unsweetened yogurt. We didn't have, but you I've have got some it. at home. Vegan mayo. Oh, we need two cilantros, not just one. I only got two one. Two cilantros? Yeah. No, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Or frozen, it does say that good. Great. I did it. That was not bad. That was that like record time. How long was that? That was not bad. For one recipe. Why did no one time me? It's fine. We'll Why did no one time me? You did a great job. I reckon I was quicker than you are. You get distracted by like me, I get, chocolates oh my God, and yeah. lunch and like, so I I'm actually fine. was far more efficient than people give me credit for. I'm well, well happy. All right, now what? Let's go. Oh, you got to pay for it now. Do you want to go grab some food for yourself? No, but do you think I'm allowed to open something before I pay yes. for it? If I'm going to pay for it. Oh, wait, look, she just added out the stuff that wasn't on the list. I did. I'm just about to pay for it, though. That was fun. That was so fun. You know what? I know you're hungry. I'm going to go home and I cook. Am. I'm so I'm going to go home and make lunch for you. So How does it feel when someone makes your own food for you? Honestly, great, because you know what the, what the amazing thing about cooking and recipes is? That you can, I, like, when I cook my mum's food, I can literally cook the same thing with the same recipe and um, it will never taste the same. Mm. In a good way. In a great way. Like, yeah. everything is so different. So when I make your recipe, it will have its own flavour. Yeah. Yeah. But because it will be made with love for you. Yeah, it will just be using different hands, different amount. Like, even if you're measuring things out, somehow things always taste different. That's what's so amazing about food. Right. I'm just not a person to speak to when I'm not fed. Right. I don't know whether you're like that. Is that how you feel right now? That's how I feel right now. I get what you're I, saying, though. I get quite hangry as well. Do you? Don't you? You do. Upset. Really, you I get really, more upset. I get upset. Or like, hand, yeah, upset. I get agitated. Agitated, right? <laughs> Agitated. Agitated. <laughs> so what do we do? What do I do when you're agitated? Ideally not talk to me, but we can't do that right now. No, we so, can't. Because um, we're recording a podcast. Let's fight. keep this going. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me the ticket, please? I don't have one. I just handed them to you like oh, two right. seconds ago. Which one's which? What do you do to keep yourself, like... Because you're someone who expends so much energy during the day. I feel like right. you're probably one of the most... What's like the word for a person who uses their time really well? <laughs> Just organized. <laughs> no, no, no. You are one of the most productive people right. that I know. And you really don't, you know, you're not a time waster. You really use your energy and your time so efficiently. But I always wonder, and I feel like I get asked this a lot, like how do you manage to maintain that energy level throughout the day? I don't. There are times when I feel tired. But a secondary part to that question mm -hmm. is when you do, like right now, I feel like I just want to get into bed and do nothing for the rest of the day. But like one can't do that often. Yeah. So what would one do if one was feeling that way and actually, you know, how do you keep motivated and then pick your energy back up? I think, first of all, I do love what I do. And, I really, and I'm really grateful 
I to get to that. do what I do. I, I feel I feel like I appreciate that. I get to do what I love every day and I don't take that for granted. I've noticed that about you. You really, even if you are feeling that way, you self-soothe a lot in the sense that you you self-talk to motivate your, like you don't really rely on other people no, to bring you. Been, uh, no, like not you, in that. you give me encouragement. No, but what I'm saying is you find ways. I know even when you're feeling tired, you're like, no, uh, you know, I may be tired, but this is something that I love doing or you're constantly talking to yourself in a positive language to motivate yourself or energize yourself. Yeah. And I've noticed that about you where even if you are tired and even if you're, yeah, I'm exhausted, but I've had such, like the best week and yeah. it's been so productive and I got this done and what an amazing thing to be able to do this or this. And so I've noticed that with you where even, and, and so I think that language really makes a difference yeah. to Yeah, how we to talk you. to ourselves, yeah. Yeah. And I always say to myself, I am tired, so I'm accepting. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then I add an action to solve that. So I am tired and I'll go to sleep tonight. I'll sleep early, early tonight, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I'll go to sleep early tonight. <laughs> or I am tired and tomorrow I'm going to sleep on the plane. So yeah. I've got a flight tomorrow in the it's morning. It's always telling you, it's, you know what it is? It's your body reacts to how you're feeling and what you're saying to it. Yeah, and so, you're not lying to it. You can't just be like, oh, I feel, I feel energized. No, because it knows you're lying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things where you are almost giving it that hope and that's something to look forward to where it's like let's just put in that last amount of effort yeah. and then just know that I also know you are struggling yeah. and I know that this is happening in my in your in yeah. in my body so I'm telling you body that we are going to do this and yeah. it's going to it's going to make us feel better and also planning recoup right like I know that like last weekend when you planned a little spa day for us yeah like I was looking forward to that yeah the whole week we knew we had a tough couple of weeks yeah. before that and now I know I've got another quite intense, like, seven days ahead. Yeah. And then I'm hoping to have a bit of, couple of days of rest. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's also balancing that out and saying, okay, I know I've got a busy period. When am I going to plan some deep rest? Totally. Rather than going, okay, I'm just going to rely on that energy. I think people, and by people, I mean people like me, mm -hmm. we live moment to moment rather yeah. than, like, there's a lot of people, and I'm not saying whether that's good or bad, but there are people who live moment to moment and react according to how they're feeling in the moment mm -hmm. and then there are people who and, and I think there's a training element to it where you know you can't always act on how you're feeling because often how you're feeling may not be may not be the right way to do what you need to do like mm -hmm. I feel a certain way right now but do I have things to do and do I need to get them done yes whereas if I went with how I was feeling and I didn't train myself to push through that sometimes mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to get done what I need to do. Mm -hmm. So I think it takes an element of training. I think that's every single time you're feeling that way, having that talk and, and, and pushing yourself to do Yeah, that's things. really smart. There you go. There you go. Um, Solved it. What was that last question on the page? It was, what kind of party person are you? Oh, introvert, extrovert. What was the No, option? it was kind of like the... So I know I... <laughs> yes, okay. And the person yawning at the party, but also the person who I find one person to talk to the whole night usually. That's what and I, I do. stick with that person. No, you are like a full on social butterfly. No, I'm not. Trying I mean... to get you out of a party. No, is no, this literally is, like this I. Is... No, so, okay, look. No, I find I'm Jeremy no. at any party. No, no, this is true. No. When Humble lived here, I would find Humble or Jeremy at any party and we would sit and have a philosophical conversation no. for an hour and a half. That's fact. No. That's fact. No, that's fact. No. Ask humble or Jeremy. You're the person. This is that stubbornness coming out in you. I know why no, too. No, I know because I'm always waiting by the door, waiting. That's for never you to happened leave. in a million years. Are you joking? <laughs> yeah. Are you joking? Name one place that we went okay, to. Okay, I'm going to ask all my friends, all of our friends tonight, when we see them, what usually happens at the end of the night. It's you talking to everybody, saying bye for about. Yeah, but that's because they guess at our home or no, at our, our event. When we're out. No. Even when we're out and about, you're talking to people and I'm waiting to go to the next shop and you're just having a... You just, you're just a chatter, you are. <laughs> Definitely not. You are. You love socialising. You know what, though? We went to some really beautiful things lately. So we were really fortunate to go to... Kristen Bell was being honoured by UN Women yes. and for the World Peace Humanitarian Fund. And it was a gala, the first ever gala. It was absolutely incredible. I think we were both moved by Sharon Stone, who spoke. Sharon Stone gave such an incredible... She talked about... She shared so much that I just didn't know about. And you know, one thing that's made me... That that situation made me think it was about... Um, there was some women who are, you know, advocating for a lot of peace around the world. And this was a woman that came from Afghanistan. 
and she was talking about the amount that's happening in Afghanistan and it made me realize that there is so much happening around the world that we don't hear about and what makes it to us is based on what the media decides to show us and I find that so interesting because when I then was thinking about other things that I've heard through my friends or you know depending on where you're from originally you may hear more to do with that country right and so I was thinking about the other areas of the world that we just don't hear about and there is so much happening around the world that we just don't know about and we we can't even and we we can't can't, it's so difficult and and it's obviously what's close to you and what what's meaningful but it is so interesting that we do kind of live in our own bubble even though you think we have so much access to other parts of the world like they were talking about what's happening in afghanistan and how you know how women are treated yeah refugee camps and how the women there are treated and um how they're not allowed to go out into even walk by themselves on the street. They're not allowed education. There's so much. Yeah, I was really blown away. I think we were both blown away by when Sharon Stone was saying that the average refugee spends 11 years in a refugee camp Mm. and there's no access to toilets and showers for that much time. Yeah. You know what? I was thinking about this and my my parents were in refugee camps while my mum was for a long time. So was my dad for years of their teenage life. And... Their refugee camps, my mum was saying, was actually, it was in London, it was in Scotland, sorry. And they were saying they did have those facilities there, but I think maybe in different parts of the world they didn't. But um, I think it's more collective showers, collective toilets. And you just think about how different people's lives can be. Like my parents went through that for their teenagers. They spent it in refugee camps. They see it as a place that saved their life. Like they see the refugee camps as we were able to leave an unsafe place to come and take Because refuge. they were able to get out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so they were so grateful to even have that, someone that actually took them in and, and they were given that opportunity to start over and start a new life. Yeah. And then the other event we went to that I think was really beautiful and special this week was the celebration event for Clarence and Jackie Avon. Oh, yeah, that was That amazing. was just spectacular. We're so, so grateful. We both were invited by Nicole Evan to celebrate her parents. And even though we didn't know her parents, I, I definitely felt... Like felt I yeah, it just... It was such a beautifully organized event. I felt so moved and touched because I walked away going, wow, if only I could even try to serve my community and yeah, live in the way too. her parents did. Like, like, to have that much impact... And whether it's impact online, offline, the people closest to you, the people that you meet in a shop, whatever it is, to have that effect where people are so touched by who you are as a person and how you've gone above and beyond for them, I think it was incredible. The number of people in so many different areas, so many different walks of life, I was blown away. It, yeah. was, it was incredible. Yeah, it was unbelievable to have that experience <laughs> and just... Yeah, just to hear about how, yeah, how someone for that many years as well yeah. could continue to support and serve their community. I know, I feel like it was from his pretty much like teenage years, yeah. or both their teenage years, all the way up till 90. Yeah. And still, there were people who had met him at 90 and were um, sharing how much, even within a couple of months, they had completely changed their perspective on Yeah, it was really, really special. Yeah. Yeah, it was incredible. And then, obviously, we got to watch this beautiful performance by uh, Stevie Wonder, which I thought was spectacular. Oh, my gosh, it literally made me cry. What a legendary human. Yeah. And then to be able to, I think, more than anybody that I've seen in real life, and we went to Beyonce's concert, we went to so many things, but... I don't know, there's something... For me, I've got a personal kind of nostalgia with Stevie Wonder. It was play... My dad used to play it all the time in the car when I was growing up. And just an amazing, amazing artist. Yeah, really fun events. So those are two social events you didn't have to drag me out of. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I really, really love attending these events that almost remind you of humanity. Yeah. Like I walked away in different ways. One was what we can do to serve, what we can do to help, the other one about how we can celebrate humans as well. I felt I walked away thinking, how do I want to celebrate my parents? So sweet. How do I want to celebrate what they gave me? Yeah, uh, it made me walk away thinking, I, because there were so many amazing stories that they were telling, and it made me walk away thinking, and this is what I'm planning to do for Christmas, is 
There's these amazing games you can buy and journals that you ask your parents to fill in and to talk about their life before you and even their life throughout you but it's a year-long journal I don't know what it's called but I'm gonna try and find it again I saw it and it asks questions that you would never normally ask your parents mm -hmm. and I realized I want to and, and I want to go back and got all these pictures and and um, things from when they were younger to actually ask the stories behind the pictures and write them down in the album because there's one thing about having like footage of and being like oh this is a nice picture but when you have the depth and the story behind it, it makes it so much more meaningful mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that with my grandma and my parents. I was going to tell you to do that with your mum Remember well. when you tried to interview your grandma? I did try to interview my grandma. I wish there was a way of doing it where she doesn't realise. My grandma gets into like performer mode when the camera's out. Or she gets really serious. But I still think I learned so much from that. You need that. to do it in a way when it's, you're just sitting in a room and in just have the camera there. Yeah. But I do think it's important. I follow this page on Instagram that's all about the questions you should ask your parents. Oh my God, look, this car does... Yeah. Hand gestures. What is that? Like to change things on the screen. Oh, you use, yeah. there it is. What do you mean? I've seen that on BMWs. I forgot. You can change songs and stuff like this. Okay, but what are you doing right now? That's the hand gesture. I don't know what I'm doing right now, For but that would be like if a song is playing. Yeah, I think it's so nice getting to know your parents before you to be able to understand them and how they are with you now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I definitely want to invest time in doing that. Yeah, definitely. It was really beautiful, really, really special. And her book is amazing. It's called um, Think You'll Be Happy. Mm. It's really, really special. It's really grateful to have her as a guest on the podcast. Uh, and then we're both excited for Christmas. Oh, I was going to say, my sister's wedding was one of those times that I feel like I really got to celebrate her. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting. You get very few opportunities to celebrate the people that you love and you almost have to take all of them and create more mm. because people don't take that much time to celebrate their own lives and we don't take time to celebrate the people's people's lives that we love. Yeah, so true. But these are a good opportunity to do that if you do it properly. Yeah. So, who were you wearing? No, no. <laughs> oh my God, look. Okay, Ravi. <laughs> I love how you have energy for stuff like that. I do, I do. Okay. <laughs> No, I was just thinking that my sister's wedding was honestly just so much fun. Yeah. Talking about spending time with family and talking about doing amazing things. So my sister had five events across seven days. She had a proper Indian with wedding. With an average attendance of over 300, 300 people. people at every single event. And that's a small Indian wedding. And that was a small Indian wedding. But it was insane. And I was like more run down from her wedding than I was from, your tour. from my tour. And I think the reason is because it was so emotional as well. Oh my god, this I, boy I must was have crying. Cried. Yeah, I must have cried. He's, like, he's just crying every day. I must have cried. Every day, yeah. every hour, the whole ceremony. You were crying as well. He looked across, he, I would look across at him and he'd be crying and then naturally when people cry, I cry. Obviously, I just also love their relationship. It's so sweet. It's, it's one of the sweetest brother-sister relationships I've ever come across. And there was one time where he turned to me and he just stopped crying and then suddenly I look over, he's crying again. He looks at me, he goes, <laughs> She was saying her vows. She's so well spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, great. Yeah, she's she did really good speeches. Like she went to elocution classes when she, she was younger. It. She it. Did it. She and she it. was just really he was welling up at her speaking so beautifully. I think she said like one line. <laughs> but you were crying as well. Of course I was crying. We yeah. love her. She's just like She's a baby. Yeah, she's yeah. your kid. Yeah, it was really cute. It was really cute. And then I cried throughout my whole speech. Cried throughout the whole speech, blubbering away. <laughs> It was really sweet though. I don't think, do you know what it was? Actually, the, the speech was half sweet and half sassy. Yeah, the first half was legendary. The first half, normally, you know in speeches people have a bit of banter. Jay took it all the way bantering. It was, it was a full on comedy set. It was. Yeah. Who knew you were funny? I you, did. You did. I think what it was, right, about the wedding was I actually realized just how much my sister loves me and she I realized how much I love her. Like, it was like, that was what I was feeling. I, you, how, how you didn't know how much your sister loves you. You are literally the epitome of, like, you're just everything to her. There is nothing you could do wrong in her eyes. And even if you do, she's forgiven it within, like, five seconds. Well, I think it's also, you know what it is? But she knows how much you love her, that's why. No, I think because we live far, I think sometimes I have to put some of my feelings aside to get on with my focus on my drive mm -hmm. and there's an element of where I have to 
I don't get to express those emotions all year round. Yeah. But I am carrying them internally. And then they all come out in that moment. Yeah. Because I don't, you know, I don't get to see my sister every week. I don't get to talk to her all the time. And when I do even, I've never found phone conversations to be as fulfilling and as deep as being in person. Yeah. And so I feel like I carried that love around and then it was all, all had to come out. And you were so wonderful. You helped her with the wedding so much. I love like She was so grateful to you and you did so much for the wedding. It was amazing. And she did an amazing job planning an epic oh wedding. Oh my God. I was like, I don't know how someone plans five events in seven days. In, such, in so was, much detail. Yeah, it was insane. It was. <laughs> oh, is that the sound of the car? Yeah. It sounds like a spaceship. It does. <laughs> it feels like a spaceship. It does. Travel to the moon. Exactly. I'm so hungry. I know. Uh, you excited for some Mexican rice? Yeah, honestly, I am. Are you excited for some stuffed pepper? We're not no, doing oh, we're not doing stuff. <laughs> Are you excited for some cabbage? Yeah. Are you expect excited for some cilantro? Yeah, are you? Are you excited for some avocados? Oh my god, fresh guac. Yeah, are you okay. excited for some taco seasoning? Yeah. Are you excited for some bell peppers? Yeah. Are you excited for some vegan A's? Mm -hmm. Are you excited for some uh, sour cream? Yes. There you go, see? <laughs> I remembered everything on the list. Okay, I actually okay. remembered your recipe. Oh my god, have you know that game that's like, I went to the store and I bought, but that's usually an alphabet order, but I went to the store and I bought beans. Asafoetida. Oh, uh, got you then. I? I went to the store and I bought asafoetida and beans. I went to the store and got some asafoetida, beans, and canned tomatoes. This is, there's no reason for this to be in the actual cart. Yet. There is. This is no. great. I Go went on. to the store and I bought asafoetida, beans. What did you say? Canned tomatoes. Canned tomatoes and dried oregano. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, that was good, go. that was fun. Now we're gonna cook and then eat. Let's do it. All right, if everyone wants to see me try and cook this recipe from Radhi's book for Radhi, tune into YouTube. Yes, please. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's Still. go. If you love this episode, you'll really enjoy my episode with Selena Gomez on befriending your inner critic and how to speak to yourself with more compassion. My fears are only going to continue to show me what I'm capable of. The more that I face my fears, the more that I feel I'm gaining strength, I'm gaining wisdom, and I just want to keep doing that.